Good morning, students. My name is Sarji Sepokov, and welcome to our today's lesson in the topic electromagnetic induction. Electromagnetic induction, this is a topic that involves the application of electric current and magnetic phase combined and in the process this is where electricity is being manufactured and we all know the importance of electricity in our homes. To begin with electromagnetic induction we are supposed to know the following <clears throat> as a student you are supposed to describe a simple experiment to illustrate electromagnetic induction you are supposed to state the factors affecting the magnitude and the direction of induced current. Again, you are supposed to state the laws of electromagnetic induction. You are supposed again to describe a simple experiment illustrating mutual induction, explaining mutual induction part. Again, as a student, you are supposed to explain the working of an AC generator, that is alternating current generator, and the direct current generator. You are supposed to explain the working of a transformer, application of electromagnetic induction, and at the end of this topic, you should be able to solve numerical problems involving the transformer. These are the contents that we are going to cover. One, an experiment illustrating magnetic induction. We are supposed to cover induced EMF and under that we are going to look at the Faraday's law and Lenz's law. We are supposed to cover mutual induction, the alternating current generator, direct current generator, Fleming's right hand rule, transformers, applications of magnetic induction. Under that, we are going to look at the induction coil and the moving coil transformers. Introduction. <clears throat> current pass through a conductor. At any time there is a flow of current, there is an associated magnetic field around that conductor. The reverse is also true. When there is a change in magnetic field around a conductor, current is being induced in that conductor. Now this process whereby the changing of magnetic field induces current in a conductor is what we call electromagnetic induction. This is attributed or was discovered by a scientist by the name Michael Faraday who was performing experiments and looking at the relationship between the current and the magnetic fields. So in the process he came across this phenomena whereby anytime there was a change in magnetic fields, current was induced in the conductor. As you can see we have a simple experiment which shows that current is being induced in a conductor when there is a change in magnetic flux. Now on the screen we have a U-shaped magnet and then the red lines indicate the magnetic field and then we have the conductor AB. This conductor is connected to a circuit, conductors, the wires and the galvanometer. The purpose of the galvanometer is to show that there is flow of current in the circuit. To begin with, in this setup, a conductor is placed right in between the magnetic fields and the moment it is moved downwards such that it cuts or it goes through the magnetic fields the galvanometer will be seen to be deflecting in a given direction again when it is moved upwards the same galvanometer will be seen to be deflecting in the opposite direction from the first one when the same conductor is left stationary, such that it does not move inside the fields, we realize that there will be no reflection 
in the galvanometer. Now, when the speed or the conductor is made to move faster in the process of going through the fails, then the deflection will be seen to move even, the deflection will even be larger than the initial one. So this simple experiment illustrates or shows that whenever there is a change in magnetic flux around the conductor, current is being induced in, a given, in the given conductor. We have the factors affecting the magnitude of the induced EMF. Remember, the motion of the conductor induces the EMF in the conductor. So the first factor is the magnitude or the strength of the current. When the magnetic field is large, then more EMF is induced. The second factor is the rate of change of magnetic flux leakage. leakage. When we have high concentration of the magnetic fields or magnetic flux, the amount of current induced becomes more. That is, the higher the intensity of the magnetic flux, the higher the EMF induced. The third factor is the number of turns of the coil or the length of the conductor. Then the fourth factor is the nature of the core. So these are the four main factors that affect the magnitude of the induced EMF in a conductor. We have magnetic flux. How do you define magnetic flux? It is the product of magnetic field strength and perpendicular area covered by the field lines. The direction of the induced EMF by a conductor is predicted by two laws of electromagnetic induction, namely the Faraday's law and the Lenz's law. We start with the Faraday's law. It says that the magnitude of induced EMF is directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux leakage. That law is very important and any time you are Asked to state it, then you have to state it the way it is. You're not supposed to paraphrase. That is how you're supposed to state it, the way it has been stated there. Then we have the Lenz's law. It states that the direction of the induced EMF is such that the induced current which it causes to flow produces a magnetic effect that opposes the change producing it. These are the two major laws that are used in this topic in magnetic electromagnetic induction. The diagram here on the screen shows magnetic flux and the magnet and also the relative motion of the magnet as it approaches the, the magnetic coil. The first one here we have a conductor. A conductor is wound round like that so that we obtain a solenoid. A solenoid is simply several coils of the conductor. When a bar magnet is moved towards the solenoid as indicated in this diagram, current flows towards this direction as indicated by the galvanometer. Actually the galvanometer will deflect in the given direction showing us that current is flowing as indicated in the diagram. In this other diagram, the magnet is being removed away from the solenoid or from the coil. Again, the galvanometer deflects in the opposite direction. So, when it comes to this, current is induced, but in this direction, and here in the opposite direction. In other words, remember Lenz's law. It tells us the direction of the EMF induced in the, in the circuit. When the magnet is going in and when it is going out. Now what is important here is that look at the direction of the current. 
As the magnet is approaching the solenoid, the current in this region here is in anti-clockwise direction. And in that case, the north polarity is created at this point. When the bar magnet is moving away from the coil, the direction of the current changes in clockwise direction at this point. So if you look at the, north, the, the polarity of the magnet at this point, and the polarity at this end of the solenoid, they are the same. If this polarity is north pole, then the polarity of the solenoid here is going to be north pole. Same applies to this one. So the diagram we have here is the mechanical energy. The explanation is the mechanical energy of a moving magnet inside a coil is converted to electric energy in form of induced current. The person pushing the magnet towards the coil must exert force to do work against repulsion of induced pole of coil magnet. Actually, since the polarity, the north, the, we have another north pole here, then for the magnet to move inside, then some work must be done against the repulsive force of the magnet at that point. Same applies to this bar magnet. When it is moving, there is attractive force at this point. So some work has to be done in either way when removing the bar, the bar magnet and also when moving the bar magnet A. Up to that point we've come to the end of our lesson students. Thank you very much for listening. Let's meet again next time.